Well, thank you very much indeed, Annette, for organising this great um, discussion and conference in such a majestic surrounding. I think it has to be one of the most majestic surroundings that I've ever had the uh, um, chance to chair a panel in. And in many ways, it's quite a thought-provoking place to be because if you think about it, back in the days when Andrew Mellon and the other titans of American industry were building America so rapidly, no one ever really bothered to ask where is growth going to come from because frankly the question seemed to be pretty self-evident. But today as we sit here at the beginning of the 21st century, there are a lot of questions about where exactly is growth going to come from. Not simply because we're emerging from a credit crisis and a recession which was profoundly unbalanced um, and in many ways we're seeing a pattern of growth that remains pretty unbalanced because, but also because there are much bigger longer term structural changes going on in the global economy which raises questions about whether we can continue to provide or create economies that are growing rapidly where productivity is rising but where there will also be jobs and a good livelihood for everyone. But to address the fundamental question today, we have a great panel of speakers. I think many of them are known to most of you, so I'll be very brief. Um, I've worked out that everyone else on the panel, <coughs> apart from me, is either a chairman or a president of something. <laughs> but <coughs> starting at my far left, <coughs> excuse me, your right, we have Steve Ratner, who's chairman of Willis Advisors, probably best known to many of you as former councillor and lead auto advisor to the US Treasury Secretary, which means that he was in charge of trying to sort out the General Motors mess. Next to him is Charles Delara, who's now chairman of the Americas for the Partners Group, but previously was a key figure um, in the Institute, in, in, Institute of International Finance, very, very deeply involved, not merely in trying to find ways to build a more rational financial system, but also in particular in the Eurozone restructuring and the Greek um, restructuring, sovereign restructuring in particular. Um, next to him is Henrietta Four, who's chairman and CEO of Holzman International, the industrial group, but also advises a number of other boards. She has the honour of being the only one of us who actually does something real, from what I can work out, in terms of making things. And then on my left, your right, is Adam Posen, president of the Peterson Institute for International Economics and a former member of the Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee. But I'd like to start by asking Henrietta, because you are actually involved in the tangible, nitty-gritty business of making things, a business that Mellon would have been very familiar with. Um, what do you think is going to be the key driver of growth in this current recovery, if we do have a recovery? And where geographically are you most optimistic right now? Well, it's a great question, and it's one that I think most corporations in America and around the world are struggling with because we're all after growth and we're after the growing markets and more profit, more margin. And there's also a very important development aspect to it in that uh, rising incomes out around the world create more prosperity and peace. And as a result, there is a very beneficial cycle of growth and investment. So I'll put in a vote of confidence for the developing world. I still think there is an enormous amount of growth that will come. It will not just be from the large companies countries like Brazil and India and China. I think India has a whole new chapter coming before it, but it will also be from the Turkeys and Indonesias and Nigerias and Egypts of the world. And this growth will be driven by several factors, one of which I think most consumer companies are struggling with, which is how to sell to the millennials. This generation, the group that is between the ages of 13 and 32, will be the consumers, they will be the employees, they will be the group that we all need to sell to, think about. It's a huge growing market. It is one that will provide um, a, a big boost in the developing world because of the demographics of the developing world. And the second area that I think has enormous potential is entrepreneurship. And it is because large entities will continue to grow but for most of the developing world, there will be millions of new businesses starting. And these businesses will be run by women, they'll be run by young people, they will be across all sectors, but it is an enormous growth opportunity. So I will tag those two as being growth opportunities. 
Right, so if you could find a female version of Mark Zuckerberg living in India today, that would be your classic <laughs> that would be driver of growth. Good, and there are probably quite a few of those women in India today. Right.